Okay, a few more keystrokes and it's ready. Now who could that be? Hey, good to see you. Come on in, sit down. I was just ready to finish up on a uh, gun review here. So let me show you real quick. All right, first of all, let's make sure that the G45 is safe to handle. We'll drop the magazine, pull the slide to the rear. Check the chamber, make sure it's empty. And the G45 is now ready to handle. When Glock came out with the 19X, I read all the rants and raves about it, had seen and handled a couple of them, but did not like them. I am not a fan of Coyote 10 for some reason. When the G45 arrived on the scene, I had a chance to hold one and instantly took a liking to it. This coming from a guy who prefers 1911 based pistols and 45 ACP flavoring, and this coming from a guy who only carries eight plus one rounds of ammunition in his EDC. But they are a fat eight rounds, and that should count for something, right? There was something about the G45 that appealed to me, and I knew that to appease the appealing, I would eventually wind up in a long-term test and evaluation relationship with the G45. When the G19X hit the marketplace, a lot of people took a liking to it. In fact, around 100,000 of these were sold, and the G19X continues to be sold. It is, after all, and according to Glock, a compact G17. It has a shorter barrel, it has a longer grip to accommodate a magazine with the same 17 cartridges as the G17. The G17 magazine could be used in the G19X. The G19, however, is probably the most popular of the Glock 9x19mm lineup extent. I often wondered what a G17 barrel would be like in a G19 frame, since the butt is always the hardest to conceal and a wee bit more of velocity of the G17 would be an advantage over the G19. Glock, however, went a different route with the G19X and the G45. They put a shorter G19 slide and barrel on a G17 frame with more capacity and still calls it a compact pistol. There is nothing compact about the grip length of a G17 frame, however. The Gen 5 Glock pistols are a definite improvement over previous generations, although the Glock 45 closely resembles previous pistols. But if you are enthusiastically Glock, Something tells you the Gen 5 handgun is different. The slide is beveled near the muzzle as an aid in holstering the handgun in tightly fitted holsters. The slide has front serrations. Front serrations are preferred by some for press checking their pistol. Glock has started adding these front serrations to more of their pistols. The slide also has an MDLC coating an ion bonded finish that reduces corrosion and scratching. It also aids in the reliable functionality of the weapon in unlooped or adverse conditions. The front sight is taller than previous types and the rear sight is cut with a wider sighting notch. If you don't care for the standard polymer sights, the sights are also available in steel and in night sights. The latter option was my choice for the G45 and I really like them. The barrel is different than earlier versions, and one that many will praise is that the barrel in the G45 is a match-grade marksman barrel, complete with an enhanced hexagonal bore in a right-hand twist, cut with conventional rifling. Polygonal rifling has advantages, but it isn't well suited to launching lead bullets. 
polygonal rifling has a smooth profile without the deep grooves in the barrel. There is nowhere for lead deposits to build up. As such, lead will coat the barrel and eventually lead to pressure spikes, though this can vary depending on whether true hard cast bullets are used. This Gen 5 barrel is well suited to use with any type of ammunition. Beyond the new rifling, the Gen 5 barrel employs a lockup more similar to the Glock 19s than the previous 17s and thus isn't interchangeable with 17s. It also features a recessed barrel crown, which is a nice touch. Additionally, the barrel seems to better support the cartridge at the web of the cartridge, which is just forward of the extractor groove, and has provided much in a discussion regarding six o'clock blowouts that have occurred in Glock pistols. The grip frame features a flared magazine well. The flare is very slight, but provides a significant advantage in rapidly replenishing the ammunition supply. The most obvious change to the Gen 5 design is the flat front grip strap. The finger grooves are gone. The grip frame is reasonably textured and offers a good hand fit for most shooters. Four back strap panels ship with the pistol from the factory. These grip panels accommodate the largest of hand sizes. I mounted the thickest grip had added a nice beaver tail to the top of the frame. And the difference in feel when holding the grip was surprisingly in a good way. The G45 ships with a grip panel holder that also serves as a tool for removing the grip pin, which is then replaced with a longer pin to accommodate the grip panels, which are snapped into place over the standard grip. In case you want to switch back to the stock grip, the tool also holds the stock pin so that you don't lose the darn thing. The ambidextrous slide lock is an improvement for those of left-handed persuasion, but I normally don't use the thing anyway to release the slide, unless I have to quickly get the pistol back into action, as the slingshot method is my preference. The magazines now have orange followers, and the base pads are thicker than before. The Glock G45 ships with three magazines, which makes the G45 more than ready right out of the box. Due to the G17 frame, magazine capacity has increased to 17 over the standard G19 15 round capacity. While a 17 plus one loadout is not a bad thing, unless they happen to be coming your way, having the capability to carry 34 more cartridges and two spare magazines that you don't have to purchase separately is a very good thing. A loading tool, while not an Uplula product, makes stuffing those magazines a little easier. And the G45 also utilizes Gen 4 magazines, something that the 19X does not. The grip width of the G45 is 1.1875 inches. When gripping the G45, my trigger finger just falls into place where I like it on the trigger, with the largest beaver tail adapter installed. The G45 does not incorporate a half moon cutout at the bottom of the grip. I never liked the cutout, have no need for it, and I do like the way it is now. If just the slide width is taken into account, the one inch G45 slide width is only slightly wider than a 1911, which measures out at 0.9145 inch. The overall width of the G45 measures out at 1.34 inches. Surprisingly, the entire width of the G45 is actually thinner than a 1911 when an ambidextrous thumb safety is taken into consideration. Unless you are a Glock enthusiast, you may not notice that the strengthening pin applied to the action is omitted. This pin, I always felt, was a weak point to the Glock design. I have seen frame cracks at the top of these pins, which were probably due to many rounds being fired or possibly too hot of cartridges fired. A coil spring, rather than a flat spring, now tensions the takedown lever. The safety plunger is cut at a different angle, and the striker is thicker than in previous generations. The firing pin channel is teardrop shaped. This new design may be a step forward for reliability as dirt, debris, unburned powder, and brass shavings have a way of finding their way into the channel. 
The lockwork, however, does not interchange with older handguns. Therefore, current aftermarket parts for the Gen 4 G17 will not fit the Gen 5 G45's frame. A small, temporary price to pay for Gen 5 Glock ownership at the present time, but I expect that will change. Trigger pull was exactly at the standard 5.5 pound mark, and I could not detect any difference between the G45 and my other Glock pistols aside from a smoother feel. The G45 balances well in my hand. The G17 feels, to me, just a little long in the barrel whereas the G45 feels just about right where it should be. With the large grip panel with beaver tail installed, the G45 has just a natural feel to me, neither compact nor overly large for carry. All right, since the topic of carry has arisen, let's talk about being able to conceal the G45. While Glock claims that the G45 is a compact pistol, I mentioned earlier that the grip is anything but compact. A lot of folks like the G19 due to its shorter grip length, because the shorter grip length makes concealment easier, but at the cost of a few less cartridges in the magazine. The G45 is marketed toward law enforcement use. The shorter barrel and slide of the G45 means that their duty holsters won't be digging into the seat of their company cars and or pushing their duty belt so far upward to be uncomfortable. Capacity, however, Leo's like, and the more the better. The increased capacity is welcomed, but for those who conceal carry IWB as a civilian or off-duty carry as a LEO, there may be a trade-off between capacity and the concealment factor. For some, the G19 may be the better option with its shorter grip length. Another factor in concealing the G45 is the use of the beaver tail grip panels. The beaver tail does extend the rear of the slide area out a bit, but with a properly canted holster, the tip of the butt will actually be higher than the edge of the beaver tail. However, a lot depends on where you carry. My normal carry is just behind the hip. For that reason, I like a little more forward cant to my holster than normal, because with this position, the tip of the butt is closer to the middle of my side which helps to better conceal the firearm should I be bending over. The butt is pulled in as tight to the body as possible to minimize side printing. That makes one look like they are carrying an oxygen bottle to a smoker's convention. A bit of modification to a simply rugged CUDA holster intended for the Springfield XDM 4.5 has made for a nearly ideal IWB Glock carrier. Borrowing a set of belt clips from the crossbreed holster and installing them into the belt cutouts allowed me to position the holster low on the waistband but still allowed for proper gripping of the G45. I was also able to adjust the cant to my liking, a bit more forward than the standard 15 degree FBI cant. While the holster does collapse when the G45 is removed, reholstering is easy given the contours of the muzzle end of the firearm. In truth, I am more concerned with pulling the pistol smoothly from the holster, and this holster allows just that. Fast out, slow in. The holster also affords complete muzzle, front sight, and rear sight protection. And it is leather, which is a bit more forgiving on the finish than Kydex. While the CUDA holster with modification works well, a holster made specifically for the firearm is way much better. At this time, however, a holster for the G45 does not exist, but a holster does exist for the G19. An A112 Hawk holster from Falco Holsters was ordered for a G19 Gen 4 model. I have a separate review coming on the Falco A112, but suffice it to say that it is an excellent holster and the G45 resides perfectly in it. For cold weather carry, and with proper clothing and holster, concealing the G45 should not be an issue. In warm and hot weather, more consideration as to clothing and the method of carry needs to be made regardless of the firearm carried. With that out of the way, let's move on to the reason that you are really viewing this. How does the G45 shoot? 
Since I don't shoot 9mm ammunition that much, there was not a lot on hand. Since I have had good luck with 6 hour 230 grain JHP 45 ACP in my 1911, I decided to foot for a box of 6 hour 147 grain 9mm JHP for the G45, as well as several Hornady Custom 147 grain XPP cartridges. The Hornady was the hotter of the two defensive loads fired, but both had exceptional accuracy. The G45 ran without a hitch, which is really not surprising. The G45 is a Glock, after all. The trigger is probably the best of any Glock pistol that I have pulled. It simply rolls past through the pull rather than meeting a wall that is common to most Glock pistols. That roll makes for a very consistent trigger pull and that aids in the accuracy department. My shooting companions that shot the G45 were also impressed by the trigger. The full grip definitely makes a difference, as does the beaver tail grip adapter. The beaver tail rests ever so gently against the top of my hand, and slide bite one less thing I have to worry about. I have to say that, even though the frame is polymer, this is one of the best feeling pistols I have yet to grip. For me, a longer trigger reach means that I have less movement with my trigger finger. Coupled with a good grip on the handle, the G45 feels like it's part of my hand, and I could tell a difference in my shooting from the first shot taken. The Glock night sights were spot on. Simply place the front dot on what you want to hit, roll the trigger back, and watch that 9mm hole appear at your POA, if you do your part. Felt recoil is mild, as compared to my 1911 in 9mm, even with its all steel frame, even though the 1911 is the heavier pistol. The G45 is just a joy to shoot with this beaver tail grip, and I find myself not readjusting my grip as often as I do with the 1911. I do have to say that the decision for having the Glock G45 on long-term test and evaluation pistols in the same caliber or at my disposal was a difficult decision. The closest contender, in my opinion, is the Springfield XDM Elite 4.5 and 9mm with its 20 plus round capacity. I have shot the XDM 4.5 and it is a fine pistol but suffers from the same challenge as the Glock G45 and Glock G17, concealability. I just think that because the Glock Gen 5 G45 is a slightly different animal in the Glock lineup is what drew me to it. That it came with night sights was a plus. The exchangeable rear grip panel with beaver tail was also a plus in preventing slide bite as I have been slide bitten by the G19 and G17 at times because of my high grip. The Glock G17 and the G19 have been proven worthy over the years of delivering the mail, and here is a hybrid of both with some definite improvements as I see them. The specifications for the G45 really don't tell the whole story, and you would probably pass by the G45 if you just relied on those specifications. Hopefully, this review will convince you to give the Glock G45 a first look, if not a second one. I think that you are really going to like this pistol. Well, that's it for the Glock G45 review. I hope that you enjoyed it. I also hope that you will stop by later for my next review. In the meantime, be safe out there.